months ago, I was working and, and a lady walked in and she came right up to me and she goes, um, <clears throat> excuse me, did, did you earn your job here or did the government give you a contract? By which I said, no, I've, I've earned my key. I, I earned this job. And she goes, oh, gosh, it's impossible for real Australians to get real jobs anywhere anymore. She actually said that. I went on to explain that, no, I'm Australian, I'm born and brought up here. And she goes, oh, no, no, but where are you really from? Typical question. I responded that, you know, my parents are from India, but you know, she goes, ah, Indians, yeah. You know, I used to stay in this place, and the previous tenants were Indians, and, you know, the place was kind of, you know, I was like, kind of what? She goes, well, you know, you guys still eat with your hands. It's a bit dirty, right? Right. <laughs> She said, you know, that's, that's one of the reasons why I've never dated an Indian, you know, they're, no offense, but they're a bit hairy, they're a bit smelly. It's like, really? You know, yeah, you know. But you know what, you guys have amazing weddings. I'd love to come to your wedding. If you invited me to your wedding, what's that song that, you know, those, those hot, like, surfer dudes dance to? That come up, come up, come up, come up, come up, come up, come up. Man. But you know what, despite after all that, despite me explaining to her many times that I was Australian, she still asked me in the end, do you like it here in Australia? <laughs> my silence speaks volumes about my presumed identity. So does yours. So I'm going to bank on my insurance for this identity theft, withdraw your presumptions about me, and deposit a reality check. They label me a curry muncher. But you see, I, I don't just munch on curry. I feast on it, motherfucker. <laughs> Samba and tandoori, homemade chutney and pakoras, chanas, alu gobi, fried pavaka and chaat, tikka and jalfrezi and chai, not tea, <laughs> masala, preferably. And you know what? That list goes on. And I'd be damned if I had to come home to roast boring and tree bland, plain salad and sliced bread, cream corn and mm. soup and lettuce heads. I don't know how their vegetarians stand it. <laughs> Salt and pepper are not spices. Meat that bleeds does not entice us. If the food lacks heat, it's a crisis. So please don't stare at me blankly when I ask for extra chili, please. <laughs> Enlighten yourself. Diversify your interests. It may garnish returns on your your mildly blanched outset. <laughs> they label us unclean. <laughs> Our ancestors' rituals of daily baths was beyond the mere cleanliness, it was spiritual. Bathed heads in front of temples, washed feet in front of mustards. No wonder our people were so confused when they didn't see butts in front of churches. We put our hands together by way of greeting one another, no kissing cheeks or shaking hands to prevent germs from spreading to each other. And yes, particle transfer was something we had already discovered. Like how we knew of atoms long before Democritus thought about them, or how we knew that we already revolved around the sun and that the universe was expanding long before Galileo disproved what the church had spun and was chained up because they refused to believe him. But back to hygienic mores. The days and health sprays are but cultural norm. Toilet paper, it's, it's just not enough to maintain a cleanly form. And we can't even touch our holy books, the Vedas, the Gita, the Mahabharata, the Ramayana, the Guru Granth Sahib, and the Holy Quran without clean hands, clean feet, and clean asses. Don't forget to scrub the back of your head and strive to maintain a clean conscience. <laughs> Shoes are for the outside world, so they remain outside our doors, for the homes of families are far too holy for those souls who choose to remain muddy. <laughs> they say that we smell wealth. The very nations that pillaged our land traded gunpowder for bloodshed while our people pleaded with scented hands. They only ever came to supply their demand for frankincense, natural honey, sandalwood and saffron, turmeric, coconut oil, musk and cinnamon, our perfection of fragrance, long outlives their malodorous, guiltily guilt-free, olfactory designed consumer conscience. So take a step back and sniff out the history because it smells a bit like bullshit and it stinks of hypocrisy. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
They broke the very backbones of our nations, stole away our ancient traditions and our homegrown education. They made us believe that all that was foreign was superior to our own, demoralized our beliefs, our self-esteem, and left our culture disowned. Even my mother feels ashamed that my beard is growing towards terror. I tried to cash in my reality check, but my name hardly fits on the ledger. Just shorten it, said the teller, an Indian whose name tag read Stephen. <laughs> it's not my real name, he said, as he handed me a receipt that barely broke even. Oh.